All right, guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. So two kind of exciting things. One thing much more exciting than the other. The first exciting thing, I found video editing software on my computer. I don't think I ever downloaded it. It must have just come with the laptop. It's been there the whole time. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And if I got it to uh, actually work and edit this video, then you saw the second exciting thing, the much more exciting thing. The Jeep goes. It goes, man. So that's cool. It goes for a little while. So it's a little while cool. Uh, yeah, so I was able to back this thing out. Uh, drove it around my front yard for a little while. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so one, so the thing that happened at some point is uh, on the, on the, Drive unit, you can uh, call up history uh, faults, and for some reason, the uh, drive unit had went into some sort of like limp mode because of a inverter over temp. Now, I don't understand that the the setting is at 70 degrees Celsius, uh, but the highest temperature that was recorded, and I was watching this on the sort of live mm, data stream that comes from the drive unit, uh, the highest temperature that I ever saw in there was 60 Celsius so uh, I don't know I don't know where it come up where it came up with that uh, but it did and then there's also two um, uh, amperage derating errors so so basically what happened is it was driving along fine and then it went into the some sort of awkward limp mode um, and uh, it wouldn't go so I'd, I'd put my foot on the accelerator and it'd, it'd creep forward like maybe six inches or a foot and then it would stop and then it would it just wouldn't do that so the first time getting in the garage I had to use a tractor uh, we pulled it and then pushed it into the garage and then I don't know a half hour later so I tried it again it was able to back down the driveway and drive up the driveway I did that like three times but then on the on the final time I was accelerating towards the garage it uh, over temped again so I don't know I don't know uh, it's possible, it's possible, it's probably likely, that the radiator that I'm using uh, isn't sufficient, mm, and there's no airflow over the radiator either, so it's basically just circulating water around. Uh, so I can maybe put a lower temperature, mm, lower temperature switch on the, uh, for the fan circuit, and it'll make the fan come on before it uh, gets to that d-rate temperature so i mean it's not good at all to have to have run the inverter that hot and i'm glad that it does have a d-rate function there um yeah it's probably a little bit more progressive if i was actually driving on the street it probably would have slowed me down a little bit uh before it just finally decided to stop but uh, the other cool thing i guess there's three cool things i said with two is i got the um gauges to work uh so let's take a look at that real quick oh yeah i got my seats in there too they look nice um, got the gauges to go. So, uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, got all kinds of noises now. I got my power steering pump on, and the vacuum pump is on, and everything's on. But, yeah, so there you go. The um, Yeah, so I got my controller temperature and my motor temperature. Um, so, with much help from Colin Kidder, uh, the unseen hero of EV TV back in the good old days. Uh, Brian Gallagher at Andromeda Interfaces and uh, Chris, sorry, <laughs> Chris, Chris at Zero EV. What's your last name, Chris? Doggone it, it happens. Uh, they all helped me out tremendously in getting that to work. Now, it's still not quite right. The RPMs, which I'm not too concerned about, I don't really care. The RPMs don't show. It should have a mile per hour uh, right there in the center of the screen. That's not showing. Um, but I don't, I'm not too worried about that because the RPMs is sort of a useless measure on this since it's a direct drive. It's not direct drive. The motor is just goes through a gearbox. So there's no gears to shift through. So, um, you know, at say 10 miles an hour, the motor is always going to be, you know, 1,000 RPM and it, you know, whatever. So... It's not very useful metric to have a display, but it's, you know, it's kind of fun just to see it moving around. What is important is that inverter temperature. Uh, yeah, so, and it's, it's not exactly scaled correctly. 
Uh, we got the DVC files from the Tesla. Uh, Brian over at Andromeda loaded those up into the uh, Evic. Sent me a, a little piece of software to download into the Evic. Um, Colin helped me sort through the DVC code so that I could program the uh, drive unit with the help of Chris. <laughs> I still can't remember your last name, Chris. I'm so sorry if you're watching this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Uh, with the help of Chris from Zero EV uh, and Colin, I was able to get the values loaded in there. I initially loaded them in as hexadecimal. Um, so the drive unit for inverter temperature wants a 306 hexadecimal code or can message. Uh, if it sounds like it, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. It wants a 306, and I guess that's hexadecimal in, the, in either the Inverter doesn't like to spit out hexadecimal or the EVIC doesn't like to listen to it. So either way, had to convert that over to non-hexadecimal, I don't know, regular numeral, regular numbers, which ended up being 744. Um, so, and that made all the difference in the world. So it started actually displaying data, uh, which is awesome. Uh, there is a, um, uh, it's a minus 40 offset, minus 40 degrees offset because the, uh, the inverter spits out temperatures in, I don't know, that doesn't really make sense why it's in minus 40, because if it just spit it out in Celsius, then it wouldn't be just a simple minus 40, there'd be a calculation, so I don't understand offsets. I Anyway, um, I'm still going to be working with Colin and Brian and Chris to try and get correct readings on that, and that is, I hope, going to be able to help future uh, EV converters using a zero EV control board with a Tesla drive unit and an EVIC uh, display. The EVIC display is gorgeous. Uh, it's very high resolution. Um, it even shows up pretty good with direct sunlight, uh, which is really nice with an overtop Jeep in the middle of summer. So uh, out in the middle, out in my front yard. Um, the highest speed I got to, I think was like 20. And uh, there were a whole bunch of click, click noises happening from the, um, from behind the uh, glove box and that is just the relay um, being in that transition period between below say 10 miles an hour and above 10 miles an hour where it stops um, letting the power steering pump work um, you'd have to go back a few videos to see what I'm talking about but basically that I've got a relay that watches the RPM of the uh, drive shaft and once it hits a certain RPM which correlates to an R, uh, road speed then I have the power steering pump uh, cease functioning because there's no need to have the power steering pump going at you know when I'm going 20 miles an hour because uh, you just don't need that power assist you just need it at low speed in like a parking lot or something so that's what that does and so that was working I don't know if it was working 100% well because I didn't get to sustain those speeds for long enough to to see um, what else uh, yeah everything else worked too that in that video you heard a whole bunch of clunk noises click 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 and that is the locker and the in the back of the the rear axle i've got what's called a lunchbox locker and it's basically uh just a a, a clutch well it's a clutch think of it like a, a big ratchet like a big you know three eighths drive or half inch drive ratchet um so that's that clicking noise so it clicks in one way not the other and the way this works is going around a corner your outside tire needs to spin faster than the inside tire so uh, if the tire is trying to uh, make it, if the tire is causing the differential in speed between one side and the other, if the tires are causing that, then the uh, locker slips, it clunks like a ratchet. If the, um, if the input power from the drive unit is, uh, and one of the tires is slipping, so the input power is trying to make the tire with less traction slip then that locker will lock and send uh, all of the power to the tire with the most amount of traction so uh, yeah that's how that works anyway so overall uh, it's, a, it's a it's a win uh, it's very exciting that I've got that display going it's uh, equally exciting that I got this thing backed up and driving it around I've got some things to work out the suspension um, it looks like the suspension might have moved on me a little bit. I need to do an alignment, of course. I need to figure out what's going on with this overtemp thing. Uh, I've got two radiators in the front, little transmission cooler radiators. 
Uh, it, one of them is actually the one that I used on my Ranger. I had an HP EBS AC76 motor with a 500 um, amp, 144 volt controller. So, you know, that works out to around 70 kilowatts. And I just kind of assumed, thought, hoped that, you know, 70 kilowatts with a Curtis controller should be 70 kilowatts with a Tesla inverter at 70 kilowatts. And, you know, assuming that uh, the efficiencies of both of these motors are the same, the waste, the heat generated by them, as long as I'm not using more than, say, 70 kilowatts, uh, it should be the same. And it worked, that, that uh, cooling system worked perfectly fine and the Ranger but in this, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, in fact, just sitting there, not doing anything, not driving anything, the temperature of the inverter just rises. Uh, I, f I think that's really strange why it would go up and get really hot just sitting there not doing anything. Uh, that's, I don't think that's good. I'm going to investigate that. I have to investigate that. So, But anyway, uh, I'm glad you keep on watching. And we've still got more to come, got more to fix, got more to do. So until next time, we'll see you later.